Testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, testing. I got my, I have my laptop up here with the presentation. Let me check something here in just a second. Testing, testing, te testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. Let's see. Uh, <coughs> uh, they said they, they said they couldn't hear in the back. It's not clear. Right, that's all. They testing, testing. Te let me let me try without the they mic. They say you have to talk directly into the mic. Yes, I'm, it's uh, unidirectional. Testing. Can you all hear me in the back? Well, if we could be a little quieter, we can't hear you. Can y'all hear me in the back? Okay, I'm just trying to figure out the audio, how we can do this, because I want to go ahead and start speaking while we wait on the uh, while we wait on the food. Can you hear me through the speaker? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me in the back? Okay, good, good, good. All right, so. Um, let me readjust the camera, then we can start. Go ahead, sister, go ahead. All right, so I'm Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, writer, and historian. Uh, how many people heard the interview that Charlene Mitchell did with me on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, WFDF? Anybody hear that? That was Wednesday on Anthony Adams' show, Wednesday morning. And then I do my show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., so I'll talk about it on my show as well. How many people found out about this from Chiquita? Okay, good, good. I need to hire her to promote my uh, lessons. <laughs> all right, good. Okay, so you all just saw the film Black Panther Wakanda Forever, right? right. Okay, so what did you all think of the movie? Great. Okay, excellent, excellent. So what we're going to do, I know they're uh, working to get the food together, but I, don't, I, uh, I can go ahead and start speaking some while they get this, while they get the food together. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to do a, a, a brief uh, presentation dealing with both Black Panther movies. And we'll deal with uh, some of the history of movies, we'll deal with the African cultural influences that we see in the movies. There are at least 11 different African cultures that we see represented in the film. Um, I'm with, we'll deal with some African history, and then with the new movie, uh, with Prince Namor, played by Tanak uh, Hereta, who's a, a, a Mexican uh, actor, they bring in a, Meso a Mesoamerican history to it, a Latino history, okay? Yes. Because they changed Prince Namor from the comic books, where he's whiter than white, they changed them to uh, being Mesoamerican, and this brings in a whole nother narrative of African people as well as Mexicans, Latinos, uh, being victims of colonization by Europeans, especially the Spanish. Okay, so you saw that depicted in the film, all right? Now, anytime I do a presentation, I know I may say some things that may be outside the circumference of some people's awareness. So uh, just because you may disagree with them or don't like them does not mean that they are not true. It just means you may have to do some research to understand what I'm talking about. This is why in my presentations I tell people, you don't have to believe a word that I say. Proper documentation ends all conversation. This is why I provide you with the evidence. I'm a historian, okay? So I do extensive research. I've been studying 30 years. Uh, so we'll do with the presentation. I'll let you know about my DVD lectures over here that I have. The purchase of those help support the African History Network, help support the research. I'll also let you know about my uh, two online history classes I teach, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, because I'm registered people for those today, and the classes are discounted also. Okay, so the... Uh, uh, the movie Black Panther, first, the first one came out February 16th, 2018. And it was the 18th movie in the Marvel comic universe, okay? So the character of Black Panther was portrayed by Chadwick Boseman. We know Chadwick Boseman passed away from colon cancer in 2020, tragically. We didn't know he was suffering from colon cancer. We knew something was wrong, but then we found out he had stage 4 colon cancer and it was a big shock, okay? The character of Black Panther uh, appeared in uh, Captain America Civil War in 2016, played by Chadwick Boseman. And that movie set up the Black Panther standalone movie starring Chadwick Boseman that came out February 2018, all right? So when people saw uh, 
uh, the first Black Panther movie. It came out in African American History Month, February, which was a good marketing strategy. It was the number one movie for five weeks. It did $1.4 billion worldwide, okay? It blew people away. And one of the reasons why it resonated so well with African Americans, but also across, uh, around the world, okay, but especially in this country, was it, it, it was not another slave movie, okay? Now, e even though slavery is an important part of our history, unfortunately, most people don't understand the history of slavery in this country. A lot of African Americans don't take this the wrong way, but a lot of us don't understand the history of slavery either. Okay, so and and, and this is some of the things I deal with in my classes because um, a lot of people hear about 1619, okay, in in Virginia. 1619 is important. August 20th, 1619, when those 29 Africans came into Virginia on the White Lion pirate ship, right? But codified slave laws didn't exist in any of the 13 colonies in 1619. The first colony that had codified slave laws in Massachusetts in 1641, they come to Connecticut in about 1650, come to Virginia about 1660, 1661. And then after, anybody heard of Bacon's Rebellion, 1676 in the colony of Virginia? Because it's gonna be after Bacon's Rebellion, which was a rebellion of African slaves, white indigenous servants, poor white people, and free, Afri and free African people, they united because they were all being exploited on the tobacco plantations in Virginia. Mm. They united against the ruling elite because they realized they had a common enemy. Mm. Okay? It's going to be after Bacon's Rebellion, starting around 1681, that they introduced the term white into the 13 British colonies, starting with Virginia. And they introduced the term white to break up the alliance between poor whites, enslaved Africans, free African people, and indigenous servants, so they can rule over them, okay? So a lot of this history we don't understand. This is why you have to understand the chronology of history. Okay, anybody ever studied the Virginia Slave Code in 1705? Okay, when you read section four of the Virginia Slave Code of 1705, they make a distinction between the treatment of Negroes and Moors. Go to encyclopediavirginia.org and read the Virginia Slave Codes of 1705. Okay? See, we don't understand this history. All right, now, the character of Black Panther was introduced in uh, July 1966 in uh, issue 52 of the Fantastic Four comic book. Um, the character of Black Panther was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Okay? And in this uh, comic book, and we didn't have, you know, we didn't have a projector screen or anything, usually I do. In, in the presentation I did in 2018 that we have on DVD, um, I'm doing a visual presentation, okay? But here we didn't have projector screens, so just bear with me. Um, in issue 52 of the Fantastic Four, July 1966, the black, he introduces the Black Panther to Charlie. And he beats up the Fantastic Four in their own comic book. Okay, and this was the first time we saw like a major African superhero. All right, and Jack Kirby said he realized that he didn't have any black superheroes, so they, they created one. All right, now at the end of that issue, he talks about it talks about how T'Challa was the richest man in the world at the time. Okay, in the Marvel comic universe. Well, that's like Mansa Musa, who's the richest man in the history of the world, who became emperor of the Mali Empire in 1312 AD. Okay? Now, there's, a, there's an article from History.com. History.com is the official website of the History Channel. All right? And in this, I'll give you the name of the article in just a minute, but this is, this is what it says in this article. It says, in the vast fictional universe of Marvel Comics, T'Challa, better known as Black Panther, is not only king of Wakanda, he's also the richest superhero of them all. And although today's fight for the title of wealthiest person alive, it, I don't think Elon Musk is going to be on that list for much longer. It's, it, it, this fool is blowing up Twitter. Okay? This is short. Don't take this the wrong way. This is showing you white privilege don't, in, don't equal intelligence. Okay? Just because you're a billionaire don't mean you know how to run a business. Okay? We're, we're saying just because you're a billionaire don't mean you should be president either. Okay? 
right. So, and because I'm a political commentator as well, I'm on Roller Martin and Filter every Friday as a panelist. I'm a political commentator also. I study politics as well. Okay, so uh, he's also the richest superhero of them all. And although today's fight for the title of wealthiest person alive involves a tug of war between billionaire CEOs, the wealthiest person in history, Mansa Musa, has more in common with Marvel's first black superhero. So this article from History.com, the History Channel, a and &E, these are Europeans telling you that they're showing the relationship between T'Challa and the fictitious Black Panther comic book and Mansa Musa, okay? Now, Mansa Musa became ruler of the Mali Empire in 1312 AD, Common Era, taking the throne after his predecessor, Abubakar II, for whom he had served as deputy, went missing on a voyage he took uh, by sea to find, the, to, find, uh, to find the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. Mansa Musa's rule came at a time when European nations were struggling due to raging civil wars and a lack of resources. They were dealing with famine, they were dealing with the Black Death, the bubonic plague that hits in 1347 to 1400 in spurts. Uh, Europe loses between one quarter to one third of their population during that period of time, 1347 to 1400. They lose between 25 million to 75 million people. Okay, so when the Black Death, when the bubonic plague came through a village, it could wipe out a whole village in seven days. And at history.com, they have some like good in depth information on it because it would cause your like in turn like your lungs it will cause them to dissolve so you will cough up your lungs okay so this devastated this devastated Europe uh, Mansa Musa's rule came at a time when European nations were struggling due to raging civil wars and a lack of resources during that period the Mali Empire flourished thanks to ample natural resources like gold and salt so the name of this article this came out March 2018 this was the month after the Black Panther movie first came out, the, the, the original one. It's called, This 14th Century African Emperor Remains the Richest Person in History. This 14th Century African Emperor Remains the Richest Person in History. This is at History.com, which is the official website of the History Channel. So this is Europeans saying this, that West Africa was flourishing when Europe was in disarray, because Europe is still, they're coming, they're trying to come out of the Dark Ages. Okay, the Vandals and the Visigoths crushed the western portion of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, and it's going to be the teachings that the African Moors take in in 711 AD, when Tariq ibn Ziyad goes into the Iberian Peninsula. They go from Morocco, and if you look at a map, uh, Spain and Portugal are right above Morocco, okay? So, you're going to have tens of thousands of Moors going in over uh, uh, decades, going into Spain and Portugal, and then they go into, they go into Sicily, they go into Italy, they're gonna go west, they go into England, Austria, Germany, and you see this whole African presence all throughout Europe, okay? Now, if, now when they go in, Europeans are already worshiping the Black Madonna child, okay? Y'all know this, right? Europeans were worshiping African people. The Black Madonna Child, which comes from Aset, Heru, and Hor, and Asar, Aset, Heru. Okay, this is a deep history. All right, now, the Greeks call them Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Okay, now, once again, I may say some things that are sad to of your own awareness. Just because you never heard them before doesn't mean they, they're not true. And they still have the statues of the Black Madonna and Child in Europe in their churches. They're, they're, they're in Poland, they're in Russia. They're in Italy. They're all, they're all throughout Czechoslovakia. You ever heard of um, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what Schwarzenegger means? No. Schwarzen uh, Schwartz means dark or swarthy. Nager is uh, Austrian and German for Negro. Mm -hmm. So Schwarzenegger can mean the, 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 the dark plowman or the black plowman because Austria and Germany are right next to each other. Now, in, in the bodybuilding world, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger was known as the Austrian Oak because he's from Austria. And when you study Austria and Germany, they have statues of African Moors in Austria and Germany because they went all throughout those areas. They went all throughout their territory. And they're taking the teachings from the Nile Valley region of Africa, 
into Europe. This is what brings Europe out of the Dark Ages. They take something called alchemy. Today we call it chemistry. Okay? Because alchemy means of chemic, and they're taking the periodic tables. They introduce alcohol. They introduce algebra. They introduce soap. They introduce all types of nautical instruments. So when we look at the Spanish, and in the movie they show this, the Spanish conquering the Mesoamericans, like the, the, the Aztecs, the Mayans, things like this, right? So when you look at Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Colon, all right, one, Columbus never came to the land we call the United States of America. If you look at where he went on his four voyages, and we deal with this in the class, because you've got to understand Columbus. We may not like to deal with Columbus. Columbus is central to understanding the spread of the transatlantic slave trade, because the Portuguese were the first ones involved in the transatlantic slave trade in 1441, going into Mauritania. The Spanish are right behind them. And the Spanish and the Portuguese, they had the most experience with the Moors, because that's where the Moors went in first. Okay? So Columbus, on his four voyages, he set sail first, August 3rd, 1492, in the need of the Pinta and the Santa Maria. He's using nautical instruments based upon technology that the Moors introduced into Europe. Because the Moors introduced spherical globes and almanacs, things like this. Everything we taught them came back to kick us in the behind. This is why I say, because I said, you read Golden Age of the Moor, and the Dr. Ivan Van Sertima, they break down all this history. And, re and read the uh, essay by Dr. Jose Clemente Bay, who's one of the baddest scholars on the history of the Moors. He used to teach classes on the history of the Moors at Berea College in Kentucky. And then, he, no, sorry, he was at Temple University first with Dr. Malefica de Asante. He was at Temple University first teaching classes on the history of the Moors. Then he, uh, now he's at Berea College in Kentucky. Berea College is where Dr. Carter G. Whitson got his uh, first undergraduate degree. Mm. Berea College in Kentucky. That's a brilliant brother also. That, how many people for me with Dr. Carter G. Whitson? What is he best known for? Only a few people? Dr. Whitson? What is he best known for? What, what is Dr. Carter G. Woodson best known for? It's a celebration in February that everybody celebrates but don't understand the history of it. Yeah, but it was, there, yeah, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, he's the one that created Negro History Week in 1926, which became Black History Month in 1976. He wrote The Miseducation of the Negro in 1933. He co-founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in September 1915. This brother is an unsung hero. That's why we celebrate African American History Month, Black History Month, now it's because of him. All right. So a lot of people hear the word Wakanda, but don't know that Wakanda is a real word. Okay? So we find the word Wakanda in Native American languages like the Omaha Ponca and Sioux Indian Native American languages, S I O U X, the Sioux Indian, um, in, in Wisconsin. There is a Wakanda water park in Wisconsin, okay? It's been there for decades. They ain't just opened it up when the movie came out. No, it's been there for decades. Uh, in Nebraska, you have schools named Wakanda. Now, you'll see different variations of the spelling of the word, but when the, but, but the, the water park in Wisconsin is spelled W-A-K-A-N-D-A, -A -A, Wakanda. And if you look at some of the schools and things like this, they're spelled Wakanda. Now, Wakanda, in the Native American languages, it basically means possesses secret powers. Possesses secret powers, which to me is a lot like black girl magic, right? Uh, uh, amongst the Osage, uh, Native American nation, it, it refers to their god, okay, Wakanda. Now, Wakanda is also a key Congo word, and key Congo is a language spoken in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, it's spoken in Angola, and other uh, Central African uh, nations. Um, Wakanda in Key Congo is in reference to family or community. Okay, it's in reference to family or community. So this is a deep word. Now, I don't know. Uh, Bluetooth ready to pair. They, uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, I don't know how much knowledge they had, but they had to have some type of knowledge. Uh, dealing with like the Native American history or something. They ain't just, just pull all this stuff out the sky, okay? So they had to have some type of knowledge of this. Uh, there was a reference uh, dealing with Wakanda from native-language.org, native-language.org that deals with uh, Wakanda. One of the variations of the spelling you'll see is W-A-K-O-N-D-A, 
all right? But uh, one of the popular spellings is what we see in the film, W-A-K-A-N-D-A. So even though it's a fictitious <coughs> African nation in Central East Africa, and over, over the decades, the location of Wakanda in the comic books has, has changed, but it's somewhere around Rwanda, Uganda, somewhere in that area, all right? It is a real word also. Okay, now, um, when we look at the, uh, the movie today, um, Black Panther will come forever. We see a Mesoamerican influence, okay, because of um, Prince Namor. Now, in the comic books, Prince Namor was introduced in 1939, Marvel Comics wow. number one, 1939, okay? And at different times, Namor is an, is an ally of Wakanda, other times he's an adversary of Wakanda. Uh, in some comic books, like during World War II, Prince Namor is fighting against the Nazis, all right? Mm -hmm. So he goes, so Namor existed before the Black Panther character did. In the comic books, there was a Greek mythology influence on uh, Prince Namor. And you see how, if you see how he's depicted, if you Google Prince Namor, you see he looks, he looks whiter than white. He has pointed ears. He has the wings on his, on his feet, which is probably in reference to like Mercury, one of the, the, uh, one of the Greek or Roman deities, things like this, right? Uh, but what we see in the film is a Mesoamerican influence to deal with a shared history of colonization. Now, Mesoamerican civilization, uh, this, it, what this is, this is, a con this is uh, the complex of indigenous cultures that developed in parts of Mexico and Central America prior to Spanish exploration and conquest in the 16th century, the 1500s. And you're going to have, like, when we look at Columbus, for instance, Columbus conquers Hispaniola, the island of Hispaniola. The western third of the island of Hispaniola is where we have Haiti, okay? Because that was conquered by the Spanish first, and then, and then 1697, the uh, French take over what we call Haiti from the Spanish, okay? Uh, he conquers uh, the Bahamas, he conquers Jamaica in 1494, Honduras, Panama, uh, you go through and look at what Columbus conquered on his four voyages, those island nations have never recovered from what happened to them over 500 years ago. Okay, killing the indigenous people. Uh, there were millions of indigenous people uh, who were killed. And then we see in about 1501, 1502, the Spanish start bringing Africans into those island nations. Okay, now, how many people are familiar with uh, the right Reverend Bishop of Tyler Casas? Anybody familiar with Dennis Casa? 